Hi, my name is Keith, and I'm known as a Florida Stone Man, and today I'm going to be talking to you all about a very important topic of when you become your shadow, or when shadow work goes wrong. This will be a very interesting video, and this might make sense to some people, and sometimes you, you don't even need shadow work to go wrong for this to happen. This just happens to some people naturally, because maybe they've done shadow work partially in a past life, maybe the shadow has somewhat emerged in this life, and the person embraces their shadow and they become their shadow. Very, very ugly, hideous thing. Uh, when a person becomes their shadow, some people will try to like represent it, but in the end, all that person has is pain, and their, their karma is horrible, and it's really bad. What is it to become your shadow? And I've been making a lot of videos on shadow work. Like, a, a lot. If you haven't seen my video in the past month, there's a lot of videos on shadow work. Like, a lot. Yes, a lot. I'm going to be stressing shadow work. Oh, so many videos and so many more videos on shadow work. Why all this shadow work videos? Florida Stone Man, teach more crystals. I'm teaching about crystals with shadow shadows and shadow crystals such as obsidian, but why all these videos on shadow work? It's because it's one of the most difficult things you can ever do as a spiritualist, and it's not being taught correctly, it's not being taught right. And the reason why a lot of people don't have exactly what they want in life is because they haven't faced shadows. The routes of uh, abundance, the routes of good news, the routes of happiness. Let's just say you want abundance in your life. Let's just say you want to meet your soulmate. Let's just say... Uh, you're just not happy in life. It all stems back to us. Because we manifest our reality. We make this into a world for ourselves. Everything we have around us is something we've manifested, whether you realize it or not. Every last circumstance, even if it's from a past life. Ooh, this is so important, and I wish pe more people would talk about it, because what's why are people so unhappy? It's their shadows. It could have been other people's shadows adding to their shadows, but if you look at it in a standpoint where if you fight these shadows, nothing will be able to get in after that, after you've really fought the shadow. And the toughest the toughest part of shadow work is it's literally fighting ourselves, because in the end, we don't have any enemies. God's taking care of those enemies. You give your problems to God, and he takes care of them. But in the end, when people have shadows, it even interferes with their relationship with God. It cuts off their relationship, leading to lack of trust in God, leading to questioning what he's doing, leading to not fully being faithful, when those are shadows that we have to deal on our own. A lot of the time, people will be like, okay, uh, why hasn't God answered my prayers? He is, but you're in a position where you're not able to receive the certain blessing that's coming to you, or it's coming to you in a way that you've asked for incorrectly, and... You're getting exactly what you asked for, and you're not happy. So everything comes back to shadows. This is the most important thing. Over the past month, over the past two months, even mid-December, I've been teaching about shadows. This is how you get to where you want to be. You fight with your shadows. And I'm getting better at teaching softer ways to do shadow work because this is shadow work is overwhelming. And that's true shadow work. That's how you know you're doing it correctly. It's overwhelming. It's literally... It, I've seen people fall to shadow work, and this is what this video is about. So I talked to you about the importance of why are we talking about shadows so much? It's because it's everything you ever want or desire lies within your shadow to overcome that, and that's how you attract it. They don't teach this in Law of Attraction. They don't teach this anywhere. I mean, sometimes certain mentors do. They'll, they'll be like, well, you're blocking your own abundance with your beliefs. That's exactly what this is. So in the end of the day, we are our own worst enemy. This not dealing with shadows doesn't get rid of the shadows. It makes you take form of a shadow. And a good example is th these shadow people you see, or shadow orbs, shadow beings, these shadow things that run around that people can see, those were people in life. And now they're shadows in the afterlife. Now you see them as shadows because they were shadows in life. And now you're seeing them exactly how they are. Remember how I talked about the spiritual realm? is exactly what you are on the inside. So you purify yourself and it helps you get into the gates of heaven. It helps you become closer to the creator. It helps your afterlife not be absolutely miserable because I've seen certain people who become spirits and they did not do any shadow work. They did not move closer to God, which is the most important thing. And they did not overcome that. And in the end, 
when they get to the afterlife, all the first thing they see is a ton of shadows. The room's full of shadows. If you ever hear a near-death experience from anyone who is uh, not pure, not a purified vessel, instead of for lights and them seeing orbs of light, they're seeing shadows everywhere. Now, certain shadows could be certain guides, but it depends on if you're in tradition or not. But generally, if you're not in an initiated tradition, a lot of those shadows are not your guides. They're just things that want to be your guide or would like attention from you. So you're seeing things that you don't want to be the shadow in the afterlife because those things cry. Those things need energy. Those things, they're, they, have, they, they need a life force. And that's not fun to be an energy. I mean, people who are energetic vampires in real life Become energetic vampires as spirits. You ever wonder where angry spirits come from? It's because people become their shadow in the afterlife because that's what they were in life, but it was just hiding behind them. Keyword shadow. And when they're in the afterlife, it's just like, that's it. That was my chance. And I, I, they get to realize all this stuff. Like, wait, I came back from a past life and I'm here again, but I messed that chance up again. Like, can I have another chance? Mm. And then the, some spirits will go absolutely nuts. And because God, sometimes God does not let those spirits come back or those spirits are in a set place due to whatever shadow they had. So that's an essence of becoming a shadow, is when you go into the afterlife. It's because you become exactly what you are here. Energy is exposed. Now, when it comes to becoming a shadow here, there's two kind of things that I've seen, is some people will embrace their shadows actively, or sometimes people will embrace it passively. The people who embrace it actively, I've seen so many just such darkness just roll its course so you see people who are like rebellious like ha, i'm a bad i'm a bad person oh, i don't need to do shadow work because i am my shadow work and yeah yeah there's people out here like that uh or out there not here go to someone else's channel who doesn't who sugarcoats shadow work i'm not sugarcoating any shadow work here but when it comes to becoming your shadow if you want to be oh if you want to be a shady person then you'll get shady results, shady karma. When the light of God emerges at, in the end of the days, end of days, you're going to be in your shadow. And that's not a good place to be versus in the light. I always use analogies of in the light versus in the darkness. Those who are in the darkness are shadows. But when they come to close to the light, it makes a little outline. So what's really ironic is when you guys start seeing angel shadows... Ooh, angel shadows is something I'll talk about in the future because I'm talking about two different kinds of different kinds of shadows here when you're in life and in the afterlife so angel shadows are actually bright so you'll see an outline of a very bright being or you'll just see an orb of light how cool is that that's how you can tell an angel from a spirit apart when you actually see them because you'll see little little white beings run around your uh just like light beings just run around your house and you're like did I just see something? I'm like, yeah, that's an angel running around your house playing games. But for those who have a lot of angels, which those people are the people who talk to God very often. The people who I've seen who have the most angels are the people who are the closest to God. Now, what happens when you become your shadow? Some people, like I said, will actively embrace it. Some people will be like, well, I am my shadow. I'm like, well, I can do whatever I want and there's no consequences. I can do... I can treat people bad, I can be a, a bad boy, bad girl, whatever you want to be, and I can put people down and I'm going to bring myself up. Ooh, those kind of people don't ever realize it. They get hit with karma like a meteor, like a tectite, like moldavite, and they don't ever see it, they don't ever recognize it. That's basically at that point masking their shadows, trying to weaponize their shadows in the wrong way. So those people will... And that, that's on the passive aspect because that's the active aspect more so the common one is when people passively embrace their shadows uh those are the kind of people to yell and scream a lot those are the people to swear all the time those are the people to just put other people down make fun of other people gossip about other people those are people who have passively embraced their shadows especially the people who uh gossip about other people those are people who engulfed in shadows to the point where they've invited other people with shadows because shadows will gather shadows gather they gather together shadows don't want to be alone a little shadow by itself is not anything shadows together at least they have company in the darkness so if you ever notice when one person kind of gossips and they'll find another person to gossip and now three people are in it now four people are in it maybe they're not directly in it but it's a chain it's because those shadows strung together but when light comes 
when the light of God comes. Even, even though it's not the end of days right now, even though we're getting close to it, God still sees all this, everything that happens behind, I mean, you guys, a lot of, not you guys, but a lot of people think they can hide from God or that certain actions are exceptions from God. Like, you'll, you'll, you'll escape certain judgment. If you're talking badly about people or putting people down or being nasty or being rude or cursing people, then guess what? You're become, you've embraced that shadow. You've never confronted, like, hey, and you'll always get the intuition. There's always some angel around you. Maybe the other person's angel you're talking badly about, doing something bad with, or just a general angel. It could be St. Michael just being like, just kind of like, hey, like, ch chill out. Like, you, like, you know what you're doing is bad. So these people will get the intuition. They'll flat out get the intuition. Even the darkest of people will get a sign like, hey, this isn't right. So they'll go past that and they'll go past the light into the shadows to be able to tap into that. So those people, uh, what are the, what's the lifestyle of those people? And a lot of people will disagree with me because people in the comment section sometimes will be like, well, I see these really nasty people living lavish, amazing lives. Like my enemies, they're all living amazing lives. And they're on Instagram posting about how great their life is. People who have great lives don't post about how great their lives is. That's smoke and mirror. If they're sitting in the shadows, you better believe they can bend smoke and mirrors, which actually goes into also talking about mirror dimensions. That's why certain demonic entities or spirits can present themselves as your ancestors or pretend to be someone else. It's because they can mani manipulate mirror dimensions and basically come up as a different smoke to come into a form to be able for you to see them. Physical law runs upon spiritual law, so this, this all just comes together very well. So, And embracing your shadows, what are the upsides to it? If it's not of light, nothing. Temporary uh, satisfaction, temporary fulfillment, but that doesn't last. It's like chasing the dragon. It's like when people have these heavy, heavy, heavy drug addictions, and uh, that's kind of a... It depends if that person does it because they like it or if they're just flat out stuck or the influence around them. You can't ever judge someone based on their addiction, but it's kind of like that. It's like a temporary high, and then it's a crash, and it's like, oh, what's going on? temporary hot and then a crash versus how do you become your shadow in a light way it's by putting the shadow behind you it's about understanding that's a, that's a part of you because no human is 100 percent perfect i'll tell you that right now god did not make humans perfect he put adam and even adam and even adam and eve in a garden and then a snake got into the garden and they Eve talked to the snake, and uh, you guys know the story. So basically, the evil, little sense of evil, little sense of temptation was always there within humans. So when they were in Eden, in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had just a little slight taste of temptation, a little shadow. The snake can be represented as a shadow as well. So that's all it took. It just took one snake. It, it took one serpent. It wasn't that much. That's because even in past lives, even in lives before this, we have shadows about us in our soul. That's why we come here. It's just to basically confront some of the shadows that we once were, work on things that we, we once were. And because people think that when they when they embrace their shadow, like, and I see some of the craziest stuff, I, I, don't, I just don't like repeating. Like, people be like, well... I don't need God because I am my own God. Do you know what the snake said to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden? They said, take a bite from this fruit because you will be your own gods. You won't die. You won't be You won't be damned to death because that's just not true. If you just take a bite, then you'll have the knowledge. And they followed that. They thought they could be their own gods. And that's the exact way people are falling today. That's the exact way people are falling today. People have a little sense of temptation or a little... All it takes is this much for something giant to happen. But people, if you're in a mechanism and if you understand that that's just a part of you as being a human, then you're like, okay, that's part of it. Because we'll constantly have to do shadow work. There's no such thing as ever completing shadow work because there's new shadows every day. Just as the sun rises and the moon, and the moon sets and the moon sets and the sun rises... The same thing. So we encounter new obstacles every day. Even if it's a tiny obstacle, uh, even if you're advancing and becoming the highest version of yourself, let's just say you're doing extremely well, your obstacles might be your blessings just because you haven't learned how to transmute them yet, but that's dealing with shadows. 
So there can be shadows with abundance, shadows with communication, shadows with trauma, shadows with anything. So confronting shadows and actually putting them behind you in a light fulfilled way through the Lord is how you become stronger. Because when you see a giant scary shadow coming up in the future, it doesn't scare you because you're like, well, I've dealt with that before and that's part of my experience. A, a good example of shadow work that you put behind you, and this is, this is one of the best examples. Just pop into my head. When someone is doing shadow work, right? And they're doing shadow work for basically how to react better to when someone yells and screams at them in public. Because that happens often. People are nasty with you sometimes. Sometimes that's just a test. So the person who who basically ma just passively or actively became their shadow will, will be like, okay, I'm going to let my shadows out because this person wants to take it to level. They want they want to get my energy to drop down. I'll drop down with them. I'll, I'll go at them with them. Like I'll, I'll show them who's boss. I'll show them who has the bigger shadow versus the person of light. And at the end of the day, if you get into a fight like that, both of you lose and both of you get hit with the same karma. Sneak peek. But uh, the, in a life-fulfilled way, you'll be like, oh, well, I've seen this in the past because people try this very often or somewhat often to the point where this is just human behavior and you have to understand that that person's in a dark place and they're trying to drop your energy level down to theirs so you can join them in their dark place and join them in their karma. So does that make you better than them? Absolutely not. No human is better than any other human. We're all human and we all bleed the same blood. But it makes you better in the sense that you didn't react to something that could have taken, just taken away from all of your blessings. And that person's getting their karma on their own, and maybe you get rewarded. Maybe, maybe that was just a test before something very big came into your life. Because usually, God will allow a certain test to happen just to see if you're worthy of the giant blessing that he's going to give you next. That's based on how you master your shadows and how you actually utilize shadows from experience and becoming a higher version of yourself and stepping into your light and putting the shadows behind you, but learning from them. Your brain's over here in your head, but you don't look at your brain. Same thing with your shadows. It's a weird example, but your shadows, you don't look at your shadows, but it's still there. It's still saved, but it's something you've mastered. And I've made videos on how to do easy, very easy level shadow work for the people who embrace their shadows. They get the karma of their shadows and it's not fun. And those people never learn. Like I said, those people are the kind of people to yell, scream, fight, curse, go to bars, clubs, be rebellious, try to uh, just some of the st stuff they listen to, some of the stuff they ingest spiritually, physically, emotionally, etc. And you'll see how that person's lifestyle is and it doesn't work out for them. It's not very fun for them. Guys, if you have any questions, ask them in the comment section. I really went in on this. This is an amazing video. If you have any questions, ask them in the comment section. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Ciao.